We want to do a giveaway giving a um, suggest shirt signed by Cliff Alexander. If you, oh, like sure. if you like, subscribe and comment to this video on YouTube, we'll have a chance to win a signed jersey, a suggested jersey from C Cliff Alexander. Then I used to be a bad kid growing up. My eighth grade basketball coach walked up to me randomly. Never knew him, never saw him a day in my life. He walks up to me and say, you know you're a 10 million dollar man. Being like overseas, I'm always by myself. I'm always alone. Some days, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my depression get the best of me. Like, my kids need me. Like, my kids need their dad. So that's why I'm really staying strong and still going, you know? Why Suggest is that special for a player? We brought Suggest back to life. So it's pretty good. Like, the fans is amazing. The Ultras is amazing. The whole fan base is amazing. Forever green, man. Do you want to go back to Suggest or no? Cliff Alexander, I'm so happy to have you today. I'm so excited for this one. I've been waiting for this one for a while. Fans are requesting you as a guest. Welcome to the podcast. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. I know, you know what I'm saying? It took a little while to get me on here, but hey, we're here now. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. It's nice outside, sunny. It was hot. It was raining a few days ago, so it's feel good outside. I feel good. Yeah, that's great. How's the family? How's your, you know, life going in Lebanon and the States? No, my family is good. You know, I got three kids, you know what I'm saying? A six-year-old, a two-year-old, and a four-month-old. Fun to be five oh. months. Oh, wow. You have a brand new baby, four-month-old. Yeah, yeah. I have a new baby, yeah. Are they in the States or in Lebanon? Yeah, yeah, they're in Chicago. No, they're in Chicago. Oh, everyone my is in kids. Chicago. Yeah, everybody. All my kids, family, dad, mom, everybody in Chicago. And did you see your four-month-old or not yet? Yeah, I spent a few weeks with her. I spent okay. a few weeks with her. Uh, fever break, I seen her. Okay. Uh, then I went home for the holidays in uh, December, so I seen her then too. Okay. How do you feel about like being away from your family, especially when you have a new baby and being in Lebanon and your family is all the way in Chicago? It's tough. It's pretty tough for sure. You know what I'm saying? I try to FaceTime my kids as much as possible. So that's so, you know what I'm saying? My youngest baby could get a feel of my voice and you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, this dad's, you know what I'm saying? But it's tough. It's really tough being away and I have kids and have family. It's tough. But I still deal with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to. I'm working, and I'm over here working, you know? I got to provide, you know? I got to make sure that they don't ever want for anything, you know? Right. Yeah, that, that's a very important point. Like, you're here on a duty. Like, you're working in Lebanon, but you know that your family is back in the States, and you can always see them. Thanks God we have, like, video FaceTime. calls. FaceTime. Yeah, 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 FaceTime, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a great invention. It's so basic, but, great. man. It's without... basic. Yeah, it's handy. It comes in handy for sure. Yeah, like I remember a long time. If you if I ask my grandma how you used to communicate with my grandpa back in the days, they used to like write letters, and right now you can just FaceTime and Face see time, it, yeah. hear it. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Like it's it's so handy, as you said. Yes, the world is evolving. <laughs> exactly. And are you happy right now in Lebanon? Like, are you truly deeply happy in Lebanon? Oh yeah, I love Lebanon. That's why I came back here, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got a great relationship with Joe, you know what I'm saying? Coach Joe came back here to win the championship, you know? Like, take what we were supposed to win last season. So I come back, you know what I'm saying? Try to get what's, what belongs to us. Try to get one, you know? Right. Okay, that's great. That's good to hear. Because a lot of people were asking me during the Q&A section and, like, on Instagram, is Cliff actually happy? Because I know you played with Sajas last year and, you know, you were playing – great and then you move to beirut so a lot of people were asking me this i'm like i don't know i have to ask you so what do you feel and about playing with Sajas last year and now you're being with uh beirut at the moment um i love the green castle forever green but uh i love beirut too you know what i'm saying it's, it's at the end of the day it's business you know don't want to know what I'm saying. Talk too much about that situation. I'm here. I'm happy. I want to win. I'm trying to help these guys win. I want to bring a championship here. This is why I'm at. So I'm going to stick it out and go from there. All right. So, Cliff, I know you you noticed the power went off. So let's do, let's mm -hmm. wait a little bit. It should be on in a minute. And uh, we'll, we'll just do this part again. All right. Uh, but, yeah, man, Sajess is... 
is pretty interesting. I, I used to be in, in Sages school, by the way. So I went, I went like, so I was in Sages for two years mm -hmm. and I was a student there and I felt like, Sages is part of my life for two years. That was so ridiculous. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, Everywhere I go. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, like the sure. fans and like people inviting me to watch basketball games and even like play basketball on our free time or in PE class. It was oh, so like intense with Sages. I've been to different schools. I changed it five schools in Lebanon and Sages, there's nothing like there's it. I want to hear it. Like I want to hear a little bit from you, like how, like why Sajas is that special for a player, you know? Um, I don't know. I don't think everybody, every player don't get that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to come and do your, play great. Like, don't get me wrong, like they love all their players, but it's different for certain type of players, you know? I don't know why it's like that. I mean, we had a great season last year. From me to the last man on the bench, we all had a great season, you know what I'm saying? We brought Sajas back to life. For real, for real. Gave 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 the fans that hope again, you know, like, ah, right, we got a chance to win it. You know what I'm saying? And they haven't won it in what, twenty years? Twenty, twenty one years. So it's pretty good. Like the fans is amazing. The ultras is amazing. The whole fan base is amazing. Forever and, green, man. Right, forever green. I like that. And you feel because it was your first year in Lebanon, you were so hyped to play basketball that you performed really well. And now yeah. it, it's a little bit like you get used to it. You're a little bit more comfortable. Like, how do you feel your comfort level is affecting your basketball? I mean, I mean I'm dealing with a lot of, you know what I'm saying, off the court issues, personal issues too, that I'm battling with myself. Like I'm talking to a therapist and stuff now. Cause I'm dealing with some stuff, but you know what I'm saying that's coming to play too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Some days I don't feel motivated to play. Some days, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my depression get the best of me, but I'm still standing strong, you know. And um, I got kids to live for, you know what I'm saying? Like, my kids need me. Like, my kids need their dad, so that's why I'm really staying strong and still going, you know, for my kids. All right. Well, first, thank you for just providing this, even if you're dealing with stuff and you have a goal and a mission, which is serving your kids. That's great, man. And I know it's how I want you to tell me how tough it is to deal with stuff in your personal life and then still go out there and perform because you're an athlete. You're not someone who works behind the desk on a computer. So your body needs to provide effort. But at the same time, you mentally should be good. And I know exact. you know that what I'm talking about because you're a pro athlete and you're dealing with this. How important it is to take care of your, you know, mental health and how hard it is to just like face it and actually like locked in your basketball. Uh, it's very hard. You know, it's very hard. Like I say, some days I don't even want to play basketball. Like I want to just stop playing sometimes. But then it's like the other, like I got, like, you know, I got the, the devil and the angel in one ear, the devil telling me, stop playing, stop playing. But the angel telling me, like, you got to provide. You got kids. You got to keep going. You got to make sure your kids are straight. You know what I'm saying? All right. So I just try to, like, balance it out. So I'm just, like, try to balance it out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And do you lose, like, motivation and love for the game? Or it's just, like, distraction? Like, ment you still love the game, but you're not mentally ready for now. Yeah. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, I still love it. Like I still want to play. Like you know what I'm saying, I still have fun playing. But it's like, yeah, it just get the. Sometimes my depression get the best of me, and I just be like checked out. Want to beat myself sometimes. Don't want to talk to nobody. All right, and how and how practically do you fix that? Like on the court, like some tips and challenges that you deal. And how do you implement it? Like if you want to, let's say mentally you're not doing great, but how do you actually treat it? I just pray, man. I just pray, you know, I just pray, pray like every time I feel like, you know what I'm saying, getting right. into that depression mode, I just sit down and pray 10, 15 minutes by myself. Yeah, sitting with yourself, I feel is key element, just yeah. sitting by yourself, writing yeah. down, doing stuff. Yeah, and being like overseas, I'm always by myself, I'm always alone, so I'm pretty, you know what I'm right. saying? Right. You know, and that that comes with, that comes into play too, though. Just being alone, don't have nobody around you. You know, that comes into play too. Like that, like being lonely is it sucks sometimes. Right. Yeah, you're right, man. A hundred percent. Like even overseas players, I've heard a lot of that. Like you have to fight the culture and like implement yourself <laughs> in the country because you come from the state. It's probably a culture shock all the way to play in Lebanon. 
Oh, very. I don't know. Cor- correct me if I'm wrong. Like the difference is like. Oh, it's like a big other. difference. <laughs> it's a big difference. Big <laughs> like difference. food, people. Uh, I don't know everything. Yes, yeah, so yeah. The buildings, everything, the whole culture is just different. It's not bad though. I like it. Right. Yeah. Well. I'm glad you're here now and you're still like locking in basketball and be able to play and actually play. In my opinion, you're playing decently well recently. Yeah, with yeah I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not the, of course, you know what I'm saying? I'm not the same player as last right. season. Everybody know that. But I'm still getting my numbers. I'm still doing what I do. Mm. Right. And do you feel this is like affecting the, the team in a negative way or no, not really? No, I don't think so. I don't think, but I, and I don't try to bring my problems to the team either, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I don't think it's affecting them for real. Okay. Okay, that's a good point. Cliff, going back a little bit, and I was checking your numbers as a high schooler and when you grew up in college, and you were like literally one of the best players in the States as a high schooler. Like even ESPN ranked you. I was reading this and I was actually really shocked and impressed. Like you were one of the best promising players that can be like in the NBA and drafted so easily. And and you moved to Kansas and you played with a college in Kansas. But I mm-hmm. want to know, um, and then you had some, you know, issues there in Kansas or let's call them like ups and downs. I want to know how you made it first to be the best player in the whole country as a high schooler with your size? Um, I started playing basketball at 14 years old. Like, I really, I picked up a basketball. I'm like, all right, this is what I want to do. So I transferred schools. Like, I used to live with my grandmother. My seventh grade year on the south side of Chicago, I used to live with my grandmother. Then I got, you know what I'm saying? I used to be a bad kid growing up. And a then, bad like, kid? I, yeah, I used to be a bad kid. Like bad what kid. bad? Like do just being a bad kid doing <laughs> dumb stuff, being bad, getting kicked out of school, getting suspended from school. Okay. So I got kicked out of school from my grandmother. Then I moved back in with my mom. And like I just had a change of heart. Like you know what I'm saying, my dad played basketball too. So like I was standing like in school, standing out like outside to go in school, getting ready, everybody getting ready to go into class. Then my eighth grade basketball coach walked up to me randomly. Never knew him, never saw him a day in my life. He walks up to me and say, you know you're a $10 million man. I wow. said, what? Yeah, I said, what? He said, you're a $10 million man. Coach Harris, Mr. Harris. He said, you're a $10 million man. Come to my basketball practice after school. I was like, all right. I went and did it. And from there, it was curtains. Like, I was locked in. I was locked in. From that day forward, I was locked in. Like, I don't want to go to the NBA. And I really put the work in and, like, really was making sacrifices. Like, during my, during my teen years, like, I was locked in on basketball. Like, all right, I want to get to the NBA, get to the NBA. I want to get further. I know what I'm saying. I want to take care of my family. I want to do that. So I was really locked in in my teen years. 14, I picked up a basketball at 14, and at 19, I was in the NBA. Wow. But prior to the NBA, in college, before mm-hmm. getting into the NBA, what happened? Because I think you played only one year in college with Kansas, and then you weren't able, eligible to play. You were like, so I think the college didn't let you play. What happened back then? Um, Like, going into college, like, I had a lot of hype because, like, I, he's a top three player in the country. He's playing at Kansas, a big-time school, a great school with great coaches. So it's like, it was a lot to handle for me. You know what I'm saying? And like coach self, he was hard on me. At the time, I didn't realize it, but it was for the better. You know, I'm like me being 28 now and I was 18 then, 18, 19 then, I'm 28 now. So uh, going back and looking at that, it was for the better, you know? And I didn't really live up to the hype that was, that I came in with, you know what I'm saying? I was, kind of shook a little bit like ah this the big you know what I'm saying like this Kansas like Coach Self had me a little bit shit scared a little bit I ain't gonna lie but it was for the better you know he was just coaching me that's all it was I never had a coach that was like that you know what I'm saying that was hard on me growing up until I went to school then I got in you know what I'm saying I got in trouble second half of the season 
with some eligibility issues about, you know what I'm saying, my family took some money. They say my family took some money or whatever. But your family took some money mm -hmm. from the college? No, uh, uh, agent, uh, NBA agent. I'm not going to say his name, but an NBA agent. And uh, I had to sit out the second half of the season. So I didn't play in the NCAA tournament, March Madness. I didn't play in that. I didn't play in the Big 12 tournament. And then I didn't play in probably like the last five, six regular season games. And then I didn't know what they was going to do with my eligibility for next year. I didn't know if they was going to, like, suspend me so I wouldn't play no more, suspend me for the season. I didn't know what was going to happen. So I was like um, – then I was on the draft boards to go, like, late first round, early second round in the draft that year. So I'm like, all right, let me take my chances. You know what I'm saying? Like, before that, though, like, I was a top five pick coming out of high school. If I was going to go into the NBA out of high school, I was a top five pick. So I'm like, all right, let me go ahead and go. I'm late first round, early second round. Let me go ahead and enter my name in it. And then what what happened? Did the whole draft process, met with teams, they worked out for a bunch of teams. Then I got injured, hurt my knee. So then I had to sit out for a little bit. Then I kind of, to be honest with you, I kind of let my foot off the gas a little bit. I like that motor, that I'm hungry motor. I kind of let my foot off the gas already because I felt like I already made it. Because everybody was in my ear like, oh, you made it, you made it, you made it. So I kind of felt, you know what I'm saying, let my foot off the gas a little bit. And uh, <clears throat> that's what, that was my biggest downfall, letting my foot off the gas. Right. Let, off the court. Off the court issues, too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was there. Like, mind you, I was in the NBA, too. But it was a lot of off the court issues, too. That was, you know what I'm saying? Couldn't get right. Was being hard headed. Thought I figured, knew everything at 19, 20 years old. Thought I knew life. I didn't know nothing. Mm, that's a good way to put it. Like, when yeah. you're young, you cannot take major decisions. And no. that's also what I see. <clears throat> like, NBA players or whoever is successful, your environment should be on top of you when yeah. you're young, like yeah. your family. And I don't know, that's what I'm hearing from you. I feel like your family or your environment wasn't there. No one was they, there. Like They was there, but they wasn't how they should have been, you know? You know what I'm saying? Like, they was there, they was telling me I need to do this, I need to do that, but they, didn't, they wouldn't... Like, I needed a mentor, you know what I'm saying? I needed a real mentor in my life at the time. I didn't have that. I didn't have no mentor. And believe it or not, your family is not a mentor. Your family is, the, they are the only support system, but they won't tell you what's actually right for you. They will say like, oh, you're doing great. Like, even if you didn't make it to the NBA, oh, you're doing great. A mentor will tell you, hey, bro, you have to work on this and this, this to be able to make it. Exactly. And that's what I feel like about family in general. Like, you need someone in the basketball field or someone that is aware that, hey, Cliff is not doing this. Yeah, you know so, what I'm saying? I need somebody to get on my ass a little bit. Like, hey, man, get your ass up. We got to go get this working. Get up. Get up right now. I needed that. Right. And with experience, do you feel that you worked on that and it's getting better? Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. I'm almost 30 years old. I've been playing professional basketball for going to be nine years now. So, so of can, course, I've grown and matured a lot. If you can go back in time, what would you adjust back then? My just my decision making. Decision making. Yeah, I made a lot of bonehead decisions. Okay. Decision making for sure. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> we're that's getting some, to juicy stuff but i want to know like what's in your mind what do you think about just bad decisions you know that's bad decisions you know what i'm saying you gotta get into deeper too just bad decisions you know what i'm saying thinking i had everything figured out living you know what i'm saying the nba lifestyle i was too caught up into the like oh yeah i got all the women i got this i got that i got a nice car you know mm. yeah you know i watch a. Uh, of course, I'm pretty sure you did the LeBron James podcast. He did one like recently. With JJ Reddit, yeah, more yeah. than two, more than 2.9 million views on it. And he said, like, to be successful, you have to sacrifice your loved ones. And yes, I, 
And I literally love that. He's like, I wake up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. And then I come back at home. I take a nap after practice. I eat. I do my stuff, gym. And then I go back to sleep and do that again. And you have to sacrifice. You got to sacrifice. I didn't do that. I didn't love. sacrifice my loved ones. I didn't. When I needed to the most, like my close friends, when I needed to the most, is like step away from them a little bit so I could get my mind right. I didn't do that, no. Mm. They, was, they was with me everywhere. Right. And I feel like also living in Lebanon right now, um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the reasons you're in Lebanon, you feel like the environment and it's like the hospitality is good. Like people are around you a little bit. It's not like the state because the state is like only money is people want to see numbers, want to see success. They don't care how you do it. You don't care what's behind you. They just want to see you on top of it. And I feel Lebanon is more flexible regarding that. How do you oh, feel yeah. about it? <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Like I say, I love Lebanon, bro. Lebanon is a great country. Like, I never had any problems out here. Like, everywhere I go, I get love. Everybody want to take pictures with me. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not like that back home. Because everybody know me. Like, oh, that's Cliff. You know what I'm saying? Over here, it's different. Yeah, you're just a number in, in the States. You're yeah. just a number performing. Here, you're like, you're, it's a more character. More character, yeah. Which is great. I mean, oh, yeah, that's, I the, that's the only thing it. Lebanon is good at, like intrapersonal relationship or relation between players and coaches and all of this <coughs> and not like only numbers and figures. Facts. I agree with you. And you played overseas too. You played in Germany. You played in France. You played in Korea. What was the best overseas experience so far? Hospitality-wise, I got to go with uh, South Korea. South For Korea, sure. okay. a no-brainer, a no-brainer. Mm. Yeah, it was great hospitality. So Lebanon have to work harder to make the hospitality better than South Korea. I didn't like that. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think Lebanon would ever match up to South Korea hospitality. So you were more happy in South Korea than Lebanon? I wouldn't say happy. I enjoy my time, but hospitality-wise, they took care of me. Okay. And what about overseas, like France and Germany? It was cool. Like, Germany, I did, I was, what, 23 years old? It was okay. I made the, you know what I'm saying? I made the best of my time there, you know? I knew I was, I was going to be there. I wanted to, you know what I'm I had to make the best of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed my time there. I met a lot of great people along the way, too, man, in these different countries. A lot of great people. Build great relationships with a lot of people. All right. That's that's the cool thing about traveling. You just meet new people, new experiences. They yeah. sometimes last, sometimes no, but you're there. And from a happiness standpoint, which place did you feel like you're happy at? The Green Castle. Huh? The Green Castle. The Green Castle. <laughs> we're, we're going back to Sages, okay? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to yeah. go back to Sages or no? I would, for sure. I definitely would. So if they ask you to come back, you would do it? Yeah. Even if it's less pay than Beirut? Ah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost 30, so I got to go where they're giving the most money at, you know? Right. I'm right. Fun of, probably got a good eight more years left of play. Eight, nine more years left of play. Okay. 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 Uh, interesting. So Sajas is always like an option for you and yeah, it's always sure. the first place you want to go to. Who did you like the most like as a staff member in Sajas or coaching member? And who was your favorite teammate too? I want to know a, a little bit about this. Um, The whole coaching staff was amazing from the the water guys, Misho, Emil, the Trent Wade strength. Everybody was fantastic, bro. Everybody. Everybody. And then, like, off the court, I hung out with Roach Kerwin. Like, he was my next-door neighbor. So that's who I really spent my time with the most, Roach. Okay. I, hung out with other, I hung out with the other guys, too. But, like, Roach, me and Roach live next to each other. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And who was the best teammate on the on court? All of them was great teammates. Everybody was great teammates. Everybody. Okay. Wasn't no bad teammate. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was great teammates. Okay, so the entire team was you were on top of it, like you. Yeah, we everyone all, was. Yeah, we all clicked, bro. We all clicked. We just all clicked, man. We all did. 
of course we have our differences as basketball. You're gonna get mad at a player for a certain numbers in basketball. But when we time to, when we time to lace up and play against the other team, we all click together. And we yeah. looked good. Definitely. You did. I was watching it and that that was ridiculous. I think you you also broke a rim with Sajas, right? That's the yeah, only Yeah, yeah, I got two of them under my belt. I got two rims. And two of them were with Sajas, right? Yeah. That's why you like Sajas. Now I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got two of them. <laughs> uh, how, uh, how many rims have you broke in your entire life? Let's see. Uh I think about four. I think four. I got four. Yeah. None with Beirut? Nah. Not yet? Nah, not yet. We still got okay. two months more two more months left. Okay. What about you did that overseas? Broke the rims or no, was it in no. the States? In the States. Okay. In the States. I broke one in the game. I broke two in the game, one in practice, and two in practice. Two okay. in the game, as two a, in practice. As a high schooler or college or NBA? High school, high school, high school. High school. My first rim break was what? I was 16 years old, AAU. Got the ball okay. on the fast break, pushed it coast to coast, dunked it, glass shattered everywhere. Mm, nice. What about the NBA experience? How was it? It was short. You got a lot of injuries. I know that. Uh, you played with the uh, with New York. You played also with Portland. Is that correct? Tell me a little bit about it. Um, it was amazing. Like it's the NBA. Everybody want to play in the NBA. You know, like if I would have did what I needed to do off the court, I would probably got still been in the NBA to this day. I, like I said, I just made bad decisions growing up. You know what I'm saying? I was 20 years old, 19 years old, living by myself. Right. No real <laughs> goddess or anything like that. But the NBA is the NBA. Everybody want to play in the NBA. It's the NBA. <laughs> Correct. All right. And I think you were also unlucky a little bit. You got injured when you signed yeah. with the Portland. Like, you didn't yeah. play. I think, nah, what, I you, I was, you you played a game? What? Or I played like five games. I was injured. I was, and yeah, then you were out for the entire preseason, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's also like unlucky. I mean, I feel like you're saying like bad decisions, but I feel also you were unlucky. Like getting injured. I was injured. too a little bit. Yeah, yeah. My knees, my knees still to this day bother me. <laughs> it was my knees, man. Now you cannot you know? blame it on only on injuries or only on bad decisions. It was like a little bit both together both that of affected it. Yeah, 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 that affected it. Yep, yep, for sure. Yeah. I said out a whole month. Tried to that's, rehab my knee. That's crazy. And what happened? Like they were paying you the whole entire time you weren't playing, or yeah, hell yeah, they paying. It's the NBA, and it's on time. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit unlucky. Plus, you know, the the mental aspect of it also play a big role. But yeah, man. All right, Cliff. We have a lot of Q and As. We have okay. like maybe 60 and 60 up q and a's we're not going to respond to all of them but i'm trying to cover as much as i can all right so let's start with a couple of ones so the first question and hussein Bzehi is asking you um is your mental health is not really good right now can you talk about it a little bit and is it because the transfer from suggest to beirut It has nothing to do with Beirut and suggest at all. It's off the court issues I'm dealing with back at home, and uh, it's gotten better <clears throat> since I'm, I'm saying these past few weeks. I've gotten better with it, dealing with it a little bit, been talking to a therapist over here, so it's gotten better. Okay, great, good to hear that. Shakur Rogers is asking you. Is not asking you, but it's an in interesting comment. So on basketball references. You were giving the nickname Thunder. <laughs> Is that a real name you were called? Thunder? No, nobody ever called me Thunder. Okay. Never heard that one. Shakur Rogers? Yeah. That's his name? Yeah he's, yeah, he's asking you that question. That's my little cousin's name. That's your little cousin? I think so. <laughs> That's interesting. You have names that you don't know about. That's yeah. cool. Kai Kai Line? is asking you, how do you adapt and how do you avoid fear on the court? Fear? I ain't fear what I'm fearing for. I'm playing basketball. I ain't fearing no man. Ain't no nice. fear in my heart for no man on and off the court. So I don't fear nothing when I play basketball. 
Nice. Sarah is telling you another question, but suggest fans, they miss you a lot. And they I miss, miss the y'all too, man. Cliff Kerwin Dio. And um, let's see, we have a lot of questions about Sages. Are you thinking about leaving Lebanon or Beirut? This is Iam, Iam Spat asking you. What, this season? Yeah, like th thinking about leaving Lebanon or Beirut after you're done. Oh, yeah. I mean, I might go somewhere else to play. I don't know what my future holds. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I got to let my agent do his job this offseason. Okay. Who's your favorite coach in Lebanon? Karsten is asking you. My favorite coach? The, my coach I'm playing for now. Okay. Joe Kataz. Joe Kataz. Okay. Yeah. Did you regret joining Beirut? This is Fakhri asking you. No, I don't regret anything, any decisions I've made. I don't regret it. No. Would you like to play with Riyadi? Or suggest if there's a chance to play with Riyadi, would you go back and play with them? This is Chris Elias asking you. Whoever offered me the most money, that's why I'm going. Nice. I like I like money. Okay. Yeah. How do you feel about money in Lebanon compared to like other South Korea, let's say, where you played? I mean, it's pretty even evened out. But I would but South Korea got, you know what I'm saying, a lot of money. But it's pretty even out. Okay. Okay. I'm getting about the same as over there that I was getting over here and that I'm getting over here. Okay. What about South Korea? Like, do you have some taxes issues or they have like, no, oh, no, it's tax free. Okay. But Germany and France, you had taxes. France, I had taxes. Germany, had no? Taxes. Nah. France okay. for sure. So for France, compared to Lebanon, we're a tax-free country. But at France, you're playing probably with higher-level basketball. How do you feel about the salary between those two? I mean, I was the when I was there, I was the highest-paid player on my team, so I was getting all of my money. But I still just I just I was getting all of my money. I just had to file taxes towards the end of the season, which I got some of that back. Okay, that's in France. What about Lebanon? Do you feel like you're the most highly-paid guy in oh, Beirut? Oh, for sure, for sure. Okay. Well, that's 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 good to know because I always want to know a little bit why players they choose Lebanon. Other than basketball is great here, you know. But it's oh, a good yeah, for sure. They got some yeah, some teams got money. The top four teams have money. <laughs> right. That makes sense. So Harut is asking you, what is your game day routine? Game day routine, it all depends. Like, if we got a game at 4, um, I'm sleep. I like to sleep also. Like, I'm real big on my sleep. Don't disrupt, the, don't disrupt me while I'm sleeping. So okay. I sleep. We got a game at 4, probably have to be at the gym at about 2.30. So I'll probably wake up at, like, 12, 30, 1 o'clock, play the video game a little bit, make me something to eat, chill, and go to the gym. I don't really do too much. Okay. And if you have a game, let's say later at nine. Night, um, still sleep, sleep to about three, four o'clock p.m. Wake up, do the same thing. And what's your sleeping cycle like? What time do you go to bed? Uh, I'll be up late, man. Sometimes I go to sleep at six in the morning. Like last night, I went to bed at like four, five. Does it I'll affect your Does it affect your performance or no? Nah. Okay. Nah, it doesn't. So you're just like used to it. That's your sleeping cycle now. Yeah. Might and, what ab late. and what about eating? What do you cook? Um, or where do you buy food from? Sometimes I eat out. Then sometimes I cook. Like I eat salmon. I eat lamb. You know what I'm saying I eat regular food. Okay. Food that I know. I don't really eat too much Lebanese food. You don't eat but Lebanese I, food? Nah. Hmm. Okay. Nah. Cliff, is that right that you used to play football in high school? Like you played American football? Yeah, I played. I actually played football before I played basketball. Because I was reading somewhere an article that said that you're physically that strong back then because you played American football. Yeah, I was a defensive tackle. Yep. 
but I st- I played probably I played my freshman year, then I tried to play my sophomore year. Then my high school basketball coach was like, "Nah, you finna get on this court. Ain't no more football. You got a promising okay. career ahead of you." You know. But did it help? Like, like American football probably helped, right? Oh yeah, it's, I think it toughened me up. Yeah, for sure, it definitely toughened me up. Because where your size and your type of body, you definitely can play American football. I can see you as a. Oh yeah, defensive <laughs> end for sure. I, I sometimes think about, dang, I should have played football. I think about it sometimes. Right. And do you watch football or no? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, football is a. I mean, you're physically, you can play football. Like, if I see you, like, on the street, I would say that's a, you know, football football uh, player, not a basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely play football. I like football. Yeah. It's a, it's a great game. So, um, let's say, what do you do for recovery? Now we sell, like, a game routine. What do you do afterwards? Um, I go hit the cold tub sometimes, normal text, basic stuff. I don't really do too much crazy stuff. Cold tub, normal text. You got to keep my knees good, you know, because I'm getting older. I've got a lot of mileage on them. Yeah, right. Do you do any ice bath or no? Yeah, cold tub. Okay. It's cold tub. We call it cold tub. Ice bath, cold tub. I mean. Okay. Yeah, that's great, man. I, I, I'm starting doing this like once a week. I don't know how often do you do it, but it feels so good afterwards. After every game day, I do it. After, every day after a game? Yeah. Okay. Even yeah, after practice too? Sometime. Okay. Sometime. All right. That's that's actually awesome. Let's keep going with the Q and A's. We have um a couple more questions. Do you have any plan going back to the NBA? Is that still possible? Going back to the NBA? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm open to it, but at this point in my career, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you feel it's realistic or not even? I mean, like, uh, do I? Right. Look at him. We the same age. I had a, the same see, great season, little run he had. He won championships, for sure. But I was putting up the same numbers he was getting. That's opportunities. That's all. I had my opportunity. A few times, you know what I'm saying? Do you feel he had connections? Opportunities come from connections? That can, that comes into play too, you know what I'm saying? Definitely comes into play as well. Like, do you up with, with Riyadi, they won a championship, and he's probably, like, great in the mental and physical standpoint. But mm-hmm. to make it to the NBA, I feel you need, like, connection. This is key element. You need to know people that can set you up for success. For sure, you need to be playing very well too oh yeah for sure for sure they definitely looking at your potential they looking at how this person is off the court like i have a bad rep around the nba you know like oh cliff he's late he smokes weed you know what i'm saying so it's gonna be pretty hard for me d i probably don't have that situation like he's just he's a good dude like they don't look at him like you know what i'm saying right. it's different you know so you feel like rep. right the image and the reputation how they see you changed uh-huh. Or effect, mm. yeah, but even long one. I agree and disagree with this. I mean, you can smoke weed and still be a great player. I mean, Kevin and now, I, Kevin now Durant. It's legal. It's legal now. Like they don't even test in the NBA no more. And that's what I was getting in trouble for back eight, seven years ago. You know what I'm saying for weed. Now it's legal. They don't need test no more. Dude, Kevin Durant said that I play better when I'm high. I didn't smoke weed with a bunch of guys in the NBA, bro. I ain't gonna say no names, but I didn't smoke weed with a bunch of high level guys in the NBA, man. Everybody That's what I'm saying. Weed. That's what I'm Everybody saying. Smokes it. Yeah. Smokes it. it doesn't it affect, you know, it, it shouldn't be. Now, if it affects you negative, this is where you should be concerned. Like, you if it's concerned, actually, yeah. if you're doing this for, you know, like a release from something going on in your life and it's, you can see it's affecting your performance, this is where you should be concerned. Yeah, I stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but if no, you're doing it. Affect- it didn't affect my performance. At all. Yeah, they just yeah. at the time the NBA didn't allow it. You know, right? So they see it like illegal. So you said like do up right now. He's not. He doesn't do this kind of stuff. That's why he has. I don't know what he do. I don't know what he do. But I'm just saying, far as part what they looking at, they looking at him as a good player, and look, he's probably a great guy. He's probably a better guy off the court. You get what I'm saying? 
that comes a long way too, being a great guy off the court. So they want to first make sure that they like him as a person off the court before seeing him playing. Seeing him play. Yeah, always. That, yeah, always. that's probably always. key. That's key element in, in, in NBA and basketball, probably. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. Like then, they like they were like during the draft process, they they send investigators out to investigate you. They finna invest all this money into you. They wanna they wanna finna look into draft you. They are sending investigators. Like I'm meeting with teams and they bringing up old tweets from four years ago. Like what is what the, what does this mean? Like they really do their research on that. Like it's big. They really do their homework. They gonna invest this money into you. They wanna see what you're doing. Police that, everything. Right. They hire you for what you can do, but they fire you for who you are. I feel, this, are, yeah. I feel this is so true. Like if you're yeah. playing great, but you're affecting the team, you're not consistent, you're doing like stuff that they don't want it, they will fire you. Even if you drop like 40, 50 points a game. Yeah, quick. Right. They will tolerate it. Right. Hmm. What's, what's after basketball for you? Let's say your season, uh -huh. you're done with basketball. What's your next plan in life? Uh, I'm going to go back to school. Go back to school, get a degree. Then uh, really? work on trying to be a uh, basketball coach, collegiate basketball coach. Okay. You want to coach high school, college? College. At the collegiate level. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that was a question by, by the way. I wanted to ask you that. But um, Little Miller, 34, asked you this question, too. That's my little cousin, too. That's your little cousin, too? Huh? You yeah. have good family. <laughs> I like that. You have good family support, man. Um, who's your best friend in the team right now? Pamela is asking you in Beirut. Who's your, like, buddy? Oh. Right now, Tyree, that's my Tyree. guy, Tyree Colbert. That little, that that young guy, he's crazy, but I like him, man. I like his energy. He's bring he bring great energy to the team. That's great, man. Karim El Baba is asking you, who's the best foreigner in the league, in your opinion? Right now, um, give me I'll three. I go with Javi. Give me three. I go with Javion. Blake. Yeah, dude, this guy is ridiculous. Yeah, I go with him. He's, he's, uh, I feel he's so underrated too. Like his profile, I mean, I did a podcast with him. Going, he he played with the NCAA Division Two in in the states, but then yeah, he, he don't made, really his resume. He don't really have a good resume. Yeah, he but build it though. But the guy is like scoring a lot, and you know his numbers are so high. Yeah, for sure. I like him. I like uh, Jordan Davis. Yeah. Um, and I like Christian Harvey too. Right. He played yeah. with uh Antranique, right? Antranique, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sherbel J is asking you, would you rather play in empty courts or full house courts? He's low key trying to send a shot. He's funny. But uh <laughs> full house of course. Who won't uh, want to play in the full house? Okay. Um Let's do one more, and then we're all set for today. Someone is asking you, do you want do you want to enter in the Sagesse team with Kerwin coach? And I have another question from it. Will he reunite with Kerwin coach in Lebanon next year? I don't know what my future holds. Okay. I can't answer that, so I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what my future holds. All right. Baby step, huh? Yeah, step baby by step, step, day by step day. By yeah right well man that was great talking to you cliff i can talk to you for hours but i know you're busy i don't want to hold you off and man thank you for coming again thank you for sharing especially at this um time in your life and period man i really appreciate it and um man best of luck for in everything you do oh thank you ramsey i appreciate it man thanks for having me man it was great talking to you we want to get back on here i'll do it again with you man no problem for sure and i don't know uh we talked about this before because you love suggest and it's very obvious that suggest the green castle we want to do a giveaway giving a um suggest shirt signed by cliff alexander if you oh, like sure. if you like subscribe and comment to this video on youtube we'll have a chance to win a signed jersey suggest the jersey from C cliff alexander thank you for this man also for providing oh, yeah, this. yeah oh for sure no problem man i got it all right. Really appreciate you, bro. All right. All right. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Bro.